Hey everybody, welcome to Board Game Heaven. My name is Raymond and in this video I'm going to do an unboxing of Trodvang Legends by Kman, which was kickstarted, just got delivered this week. But before I open up the box, I'd like to point you towards my Patreon page because if you like what I do and you'd like to support me, you can do so for as little as just $1 a month or more, which is greatly appreciated. There's a link in the description below that will take you there. And in return for your support, you'll get access to some Patreon exclusive posts, early access to all of my videos on YouTube and your name in the credits as a supporter. All right, let's open up the box, see what's inside. All right, so this is the core box of the game, Trudvang Legends by Kman and Ride Minds. A Legends game by Jordi Aiden, Umberto Pignatelli, Francesco Nepitello, and Marco Maggi. So, it's quite a big box, as you can see. It's a game that plays in about two hours per adventure for ages 14 and up for one to four players. Has some really cool artwork. Look at that. And as I understand it, Trudvang is actually an RPG that now got turned into a board game as well. I love the art. The art is really good. There's even a sideways art for shelving your game vertically, which I do appreciate. And on the back here, you can see the part of board, part of the board, some miniatures, some tokens, the book, player boards, the stuff that you will have on the table, a list of all the components and a little bit of a blurb about the story and what the game is. All right, let's open up the box. So you'll notice that the back of the box actually had a reprinted backside. So there must be a printing error on the, on the actual box, I don't know. I'll just keep that at the bottom of the box then. We have a little, uh, come on, pamphlet free content get it here and here is a sheet of adventures adventure seat sheet c1 c20 so let's open that up and have a quick peek not that there's a whole lot to see there they're basically just numbers and letters and titles but just to see how many sheets we're dealing with here they have a really um, soft finish on them. So we've got C1, Child of the Light, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, etc. up until L. And there's C2 on the back. So we have a whole lot of sheets like this. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine and 10 double-sided big adventure sheets. That's quite a lot. Next, we have this punch board here. These cards, Trudvan Legends. So you basically take these out and uh, you can put cards in here, I guess. I don't know. And maybe we need to uh, wait with opening these. I'm not entirely sure yet. I don't know how to play the game yet. I just got it. So I'll still have to learn. And that looks very really interested. It's it's double layered, so you know you can pull these out, and uh, there will be something there. We have one punch board of tokens, again with the alphabetical uh, letters there, A through L. We've got the characters here; they have their own tokens. We have these tokens. We have exc exclamation marks and arrows and hearts for tracking health, I guess. We have these wolves and they are all double-sided. That's one sheet. Here's another sheet of tokens. Whole bunch of small round tokens and, uh, and some letters here and some of these. And they are also double-sided. All right. Next is the board or boards. Uh, this is a separate board where you keep cards. These have these plastic slots, as you can see, that will hold a single card. 
and uh, it looks really nice. It's also, it's double layered with, with paper on top. I don't know if you can see that, but they uh, have the, the back, the cardboard, then they put the foil, this plastic on, and then the top paper over that. So uh, that's pretty interesting and nice art as well. So we have stories, it says there, and phases. Okay, that looks really nice. Just put that here. This must be the play board, which is also pretty big. And I have it upside down, of course I do. <laughs> and it looks pretty big, it just, just doesn't fit in the frame. But uh, we have the land here with uh, all kinds of different regions. Um, and every region has one of these pockets as well. Same kind of double layering as the board we just saw. So there's the cardboard at the bottom, paper or you know thicker paper on the top glued on with the same art and the plastic in between. This does feel kind of tight, but uh, yeah, we'll see how that goes. I'll, I'll try to put in a card in a bit. All right, so we have that. Be careful when closing that. And let's see here, look at this. This looks beautiful. So are these the character boards? I guess so. Let's have a look. Let's have a look what this is. There's a bit of tape here. I think I'll take my trusty knife to cut through that tape. And there we go. So look at that art here on the back. That's amazing. The adventurers coming down here, uh, fighting a dragon. That's really cool. They all have the same backs. There's four of these. So you got a track here, which I don't know, might be for your health or for the number of turns you have. Combat, draw four, once and three at a time. So that tells you how that works. As a reminder, you have a track here, a track there, spot for cards. There's spots for cards on the sides here. You can stack cards here. And again, they have the same kind of a soft finish. This is something I haven't felt before. This is a, a, a peculiar feeling, I have to say. A really strange kind of paper they use, but it feels very sturdy. It almost feels a bit like plastic, some kind of material they used. I almost feel like I could spill water in this and it would be fine. I'm not gonna test that theory, <laughs> but it feels like that. It's, it just felt, feels like very good quality. This, this, I don't think this will rip very easily. All right, then we have a rule book, which is quite a thick rule book. Again, with lovely art, it does have a table of contents, so you can quickly find what you're looking for, which is great. More free digital content, so probably maybe extra missions, extra stories. We have all the components. We've got the basic concepts. Uh, this is the points of interest board, see? So you can take out the uh, the covers to cover up the window. Oh, so these are A, B, C. So you take out the, the small parts and you have A through L and then you can take these out or cover them up. Interesting. This is the adventure board, the map, hero dashboards. We've seen those. Then it tells you how the cards work, which classes you have and how to set up the game. There it is. The overview with the basic rules. So there's quite a lot of that. You've got titles as well. So there's quite a bit of rules to learn here. But it is kind of like an RPG. So uh, yeah, this is, this is a bit of a, a read. <laughs> so that means you do need to have a dedicated group of people who will invest some time into actually playing this. But this uh, will give you plenty of gameplay to make it worth your while. And a summary at the back, which is always great. All right, what else do we have here? We, wow, we have a book of sagas. 
Look at how big that is. So this book is used in the game. It's probably got all the story, the lore. So let's open that up. There we go. Oh, and it has some extra things here, an adventure map, but look at this. This is certainly worthy of the name of book. 126 pages. All right, and I shouldn't actually show you too much of that because I would spoil things. This t basically tells you what passages to read at what time. So this is the story and it's kind of like choose your own adventure, I guess. The, the, the path branches and you have to read certain sections of this book to tell you how the story progresses. That's amazing. So that means replayability is really high. We have these two adventure maps and they seem to be double-sided. Well, this one is just this image, which looks lovely, but we have three adventure maps. That's really cool. All right, what else do we have? We have the box of minis. So let's take a look at these things first. We have the bags that hold tokens. So every player gets their own bag, I think. We have four colors, so that leads me to believe one for each player. Look at that. Lovely. And you put tokens in there. You, it's kind of like a bag building experience, if I remember correctly. You put tokens in there, and then when you're facing a challenge, you draw tokens, and uh, that will tell you what you can do and what your options are. Again, I'm, I'm, I'm speculating a bit because I, I don't really remember all the rules. I, I browsed through them back during the Kickstarter, which was several years ago. Then we have these uh, bases, colored clips to clip on your bases of your character. And this is a room for cards and for tokens, I guess, underneath once you've uh, opened everything, although there's room here as well. This is actually a separate little tray. So I guess you could use this as a card stand while playing, which is uh, very nice. That, that's a nice touch. I like that. Put that sideways. So there's a whole bunch of cards. They have stories on them. So I'm not going to open these just yet. Uh, I don't want to spoil anything. Although I do want to, oh, there's other cards as well. I do want to try them on the map, but I guess I can try any of these. There's event cards, which also have text on them, which I will not spoil. There's these character cards. I think I can open these. These are defeats. We've got more character cards here with feats. I guess there's one for every character. So Valerion and Ladonna and Catley mailing. We've got Bria and Volgr. So these are the six characters in the core game. There are expansions that are being deliver delivered in a separate wave. So they will have additional characters. So uh, let's just see how that fits on the map. I'll be right back. So this is just one of the character's decks that I opened. So you got your character with all the tokens uh, that you put in your bag. And uh, there's two sides here. And the things you can do basically. So sacrifice is an attack. And it requires a blue token and either a blue or a green token, I guess. And then that can trigger. I guess that's how it works. It seems pretty straightforward. So that's what you need to draw from the bag in order to successfully cast these. So there's a whole bunch of those. And let's just see how that works on the map. So these are, of course, not going on the map. But I just picked these because I don't want to spoil any of the other cards of the events and what have you. But just want to see, since all these cards are the same size, how that fits. So I'm going to have to try and get this underneath, which is a little bit tricky. But you can put your nail and then just push it a little and that will work. Um, there we go. So it does fit in. It fits in nicely. But I can already tell you that if you want to sleeve your cards, that's going to be a problem. This is pretty tight. This is pretty tight. And once they're in, they're in, right? See, there's some wiggle room. But uh, 
getting them out is not that hard. You just, you know, get your nail underneath the card and pull it out. Getting it in is a bit tricky at first. I guess this will, uh, in time, you know, get more, but you just put your nail underneath, push it down just a little bit and you'll be able to uh, put your card in. It's not that hard. It doesn't feel like you're destroying the plastic at all. So yeah, sleeving the cards that go in here is probably not an option, but I think you can just sleeve the cards that you use as a player just fine. All right, so those are the cards. Uh, let's check out the miniatures. So this is the box of miniatures. There's even a storage guide at the back. See, it tells you how to store it. When you put the plastic trays together, the box tells you what goes where. And then when everything is in the plastic trays, you can uh, put it back in the cardboard box. If you want to put it in the cardboard box, I mean, you could technically just put this like that into your, uh, your board box, your game box and maybe just cut this out and put that on the bottom of the game box but this does keep it you know in place a little bit more safely i guess so let's take a closer look at those so we have some miniatures here these are the heroes the gray ones and these are some enemies they look like draugr so uh let's check out uh the heroes first uh, I haven't remembered all the names. Well, you know what? I'm, I'm going to grab the player decks. Just put them all out here. And Volger here that I opened. So this looks like Catley. Catley here has a big staff and has all kinds of little metal plates hanging from ropes on her belt. And she's got long hair, billowing skirt. And that's pretty cool. It's very detailed. Love it. Holding the staff with two hands. And uh, looks like there's all kind of little, or stone maybe, it could be stone or metal, little talismans hanging from just about everything. <laughs> So that is Catley. Here we have Falerion, a rotund man with a hammer, proudly showing his belly. <laughs> He's got a big beard. Looks like a very stout fellow. Also pretty cool. So that's him. Then we have, this looks like Lidana. Yep, holding her big axe. So a giant axe blade there, long handle, two-handed battle axe. She's got a sword on her belt. She's got some animal and human skulls on the belt as well. And a fur cape, very detailed. This looks very thin, so be careful with that. Uh, it's not super bendy, so um, be careful that that doesn't snap. Then we have Volger, who I believe is a dwarf. Looking really cool, with the beard, a big nose, and the... Uh, looks like that's part of the helmet, actually. Not sure. <laughs> Kind of looks like he has like metal um, nose piece on his helmet. And even the mustache looks like it's part of the helmet. It's pretty cool. They're all numbered as well, I see. He's got a big hammer. Also, there's a lot of detail. I don't know if you can see that, but there's a lot of detail here on the hammer itself. There's plenty of detail in these miniatures. See the uh, the mail there, little pl plate mail or chains, whatever these are, scale mail. Got some rings there. 
It's an interesting character. Then we have a mailing who has a longbow pulling a uh, arrow from his quiver. Very, very longbow indeed. It's very straight. <laughs> so that is the quiver there. He also has some furs and uh, he's got long braided hair. Really cool. Ready to fire an arrow. Nice. And then finally we have Bria, the warrior woman with two swords, wielding two swords, ready to strike, very dynamic stance. And she's got some uh, chest armor there. She's got a bunch of pouches. She's got some pauldrons or epaulettes. I think these are epaulettes. Pauldrons are like gloves, right? No, those are gauntlets. <laughs> the shoulder things. And uh, she's got some shin protection as well. Nice and detailed figures. Looking good so far. And we have these uh, undead, these Draugr. Also really cool, big, uh, you know, busted up sword and a shield. They are wearing some armor. You can see the ribs underneath there. Look at that little face there on the shield. It's upside down, of course, uh, because he's holding it like that. But that looks really cool. Very detailed armor as well. And you've got eight of those in this tray. All right, then we have another tray with some big figures and some small figures. We have, of course, these boats which I guess indicates where you're landing if you're coming from the sea. It's a pretty nice little long boats with the oars in the water and the little Vikings there sitting at the oars. It's pretty fun. It's pretty cool. Yeah, nice. We have two of those. Then we got these little goblin-like archers the pointy hat and the pointy ears and a pointy nose, <laughs> pointy arrow. Looking pretty cool. Got some armor on as well. Their upper body is not covered. So you can paint their skin in whatever color you think these should be. Got the quiver there. So that's pretty good looking. We've got two, four, six, eight of those. We've got four of these lions. Looking very cool. Really cool, they really resemble the art style. Bulky uh, lion there. The manes, the big teeth. I like the eyes as well. So those are looking good. You have four of those. Then we have four of these Minotaurs. Also really cool pose going forward, you know, hands backwards, head forwards, trying to grab you with their horns. Very muscular. He's got this strap holding the sheath of his sword. On the back so they do fight with swords as well and uh, yeah looking very intimidating there good detail I do see a uh, quite a big seam at the waist where the model was put together uh, so maybe a little bit of green stuff in that seam uh, to cover that up, at least on the back, uh, would help. Let's see, do they all have that? Yes, it does look like they do. All right. A little bit unfortunate there. Usually with the Kaman models, there's uh, 
very little in the way of you know visible seams they usually work them into the sculpts very well we have this giant with a cleaver and a big sword wearing this cool helmet with the viking horns kind of like he took like the um the front of the viking ships I forget the, the the nautical term <laughs> and uh, put them on a helmet it's pretty cool got lots of scars on the back there you can see those in the sculpt and uh, the hair coming from underneath the helmet there pouches some skulls wearing some fur and some cloth there's a dagger here with a nice sculpted bird's head big feet and the skulls and the stone talismans on the uh, arm bands here pretty cool so this one does not have any visible seams i think the dagger is glued on separately and there's a seam there i think the arms connect there uh, if you can see that there's a line here but that is nicely tucked away into the sculpt so you can barely make it out so that's what i meant usually they're very well done like that another giant here a bigger giant with the huge horns again you can see there's a seam here but that's at a natural incurring spot so that doesn't really bother me and uh, same with the arms see the arms are connected at the shoulder here as well but they do it in such a way that the the armor he's wearing actually covers up that seam so that's really well done the head is of course a separate part as well this is a multi-part giant chonky model but really cool he's got the fur everywhere he's got shields and then chests bags hanging from his armor and uh, a huge dagger here <laughs> it's pretty cool the sword is amazing I've seen a lot of action maybe it's a stone sword you know it's too big to forge from from steel so they made it from stone and it's got a giant belt and even the belt has some engraved uh, figures there some engravings that's really cool this is a massive massive model quite heavy really really cool i love that i love also love the the engravings on the sword itself the giant horns <laughs> this is really cool and finally we have this dragon also very much uh in the style of the artwork for trudvang looking really cool look at that dragon look at that face very leathery skin lots of ridges and, and details and then there's the eyes there and the teeth all the crooked teeth there's just a whole whole lot of detail in this model just look at that skin how many folds and then little ridges there are and the spikes on the back and the wings look at that how very detailed these are like old leathery wings look at that see that that is very impressive sculpting on these figures is really good really liking how they look and that's also a big chunky figure nice you know chunky little dragon i like it of course he's, he's still pretty big compared to uh the characters but there you go that is the dragon and those are all the figures and all the content in trudvang legends and so that was my unboxing of trudvang legends by Kman games i hope you enjoyed this video if you did please give it a thumbs up and please also just hit that subscribe button if you haven't already 
YouTube tells me that from all the views I get, only about 3% comes from actual subscribers. So that means there's lots of room for growth on my channel. Just hit that subscribe button. It's absolutely free and very much appreciated. And if you want to support me financially as well, you can do so by going to my Patreon page. There's a link in the description below or an icon at the end of the video that you can also click. Very much appreciated. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time on Board Game Heaven. Thank you.